Ty Seagal, Three Bells album review. Let's chat about it. Hey, friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning. Here tonight to chat about this latest album from California, Garage Rock God, Ty Seagal, a true cult favorite of mine. He is someone that I have followed since uh, my late teens, very early in his discography. I kind of latched on to him around the time of the Melted album. And ever since, I have followed him pretty closely, and that is no easy task. I mean, if you have not dove into Ty's discography and want to check some of his early stuff out, good luck because there's a lot of it. But for many years, that's what made his music so exciting. Albums like Goodbye Bread and Melted and collaborations like Hair or his Slaughterhouse Project. These were all albums that blew my damn mind. I was just coming off my classic rock phase and getting into more modern music and just hearing this absolute weirdo get on this lo-fi production and just play some old school psychedelic rock with serious personality. Uh, it was exciting to me. Now, like I said, his discography is pretty lengthy. I mean, this is like his, what, 16th just plain solo record, but he has released dozens of other albums, you know, collaborations, side projects, live albums. The guy has done quite a bit, but over the last few years, I feel like he's been harder to place than ever. 2021's Harmonizer dropped out of nowhere and showed Ty uh, getting into some moog since and to be on paper, that sounded like a match made in heaven. But uh, while the opening tracks were really exciting, I don't think it played out to a really interesting full-length album. And and the last time we heard with from Ty uh, was with his Hello High project, an album that you know I thought was kind of okay at the times, but it's actually lessened on me since. I just felt like at the time Ty was really spinning his wheels and not really reaching for anything new, which leads me to this new record, which you know I was genuinely curious. I was going to listen to it anyway, but uh, the singles leading up to this thing showed Ty really, you know, getting creative again, really digging into his psychedelic roots. It's been a while since he's really, truly freaked out on us. Now, that leads me to this new album, which, you know what? It's actually not that bad. This album starts off with the bell, and from start to finish, this is a very old-school, classic Ty Seagal intro. It's that pensive, super throwback, almost classic rock-sounding, psychedelic rock tune. Uh, I'll be a little bit more on the rails these days, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, Ty has grown up quite a bit since those early records, and this is a solid, mature sound from him. I love the dense lyrics and the acoustic strummed riff that we get here. Now, I'm going to call this out early, and this is a big one. This is a long album, and a lot of these tracks are plus five minutes. If that doesn't sound like a good time to you, trust me, I get it. But this track here is a mission statement for this album, and if you don't like this track and the sounds that Ty's producing here, you may not like this album. But I feel like this track really progresses and sets the tone for what's to come really well, and it's really good. Void, on the other hand, is a little bit more upfront, in your face. I mean, there's nothing pensive about this track at all. As a matter of fact, it's very busy from the word go. These guitars do not sit still, but they lead to this really off-key, just weird, just very freakish groove that's done really well. Plus, I love how genuinely freakish this track gets by the halfway point. I mean, Ty's vocals go from pretty accessible to downright sinister. For me, this is the dose of weird in Ty's discography that I've been kind of waiting to hear for a long time. I also really love I Hear. No joke, this track is nasty. We get a really bulky bass groove on this track and just a seriously slick groove. And Ty really sits with it and gives us a really commanding performance over it. I mean, it does get pretty freaking out there at points. I mean, Ty, throughout this whole record, is, if anything, letting that freak flag fly. But this track is like the complete package for me. I just love how freaky and bluesy it gets. Then we get High DD, which is this weird, swagger-filled, just really sleazy jam. I just love Ty's falsettos on this track and the sort of jazzy drumming that we get. I honestly love the playing all around between the gloomy bass and the gritty riff. This thing's got some punch to it. 
Now, I will say this, another sort of knock against this album are Ty's vocals. While I personally love his delivery across this record because I've, you know, watched his career from start to finish practically, they are a little less expressive than usual. Ty is definitely at his more lackadaisical singing throughout this record. Personally, I think it works. I also really love Reflections. This is one of the most pensive and patient tracks here. It's a little bit more low-key. It's definitely a lot more meditative. But I love the way they genuinely mesh with Ty's very freakish vocals on this track. There is such an old-school feeling to this, like an old-school, rustic, classic rock feeling that's really scratching a lot of itches. I mean, like I said, you know, when I got into Ty, he was just some oddball just playing balls-to-the-wall psychedelic rock over some lo-fi production and just calling it a day. And while this is a little bit cleaner and a little bit more on the rails, that's a lot of what I'm getting here. And there's something just genuinely intoxicating about the guitar solos and the hazy atmosphere. And the final bluesy minute is just really, really classy. I also do really like Move. I mean, I like it so much, I think this track could have been a single. I mean, here, Ty breaks out some bulky, freaky funk that will absolutely be music to the ears of anybody who really loved his emotional mugger project. It's one of the more eclectic tunes here, and I, for one, really do enjoy the fact that he brought on his wife, Danae, to do vocals on this track. I have been a big fan of their CIA project so far. And when this track opens up into a full-blown jam halfway through, it takes me back to some of the best moments on Melted. The swagger on this track is nuts. It's got charisma to spare. Oh, the guitar solo is really, really great, too. For now, all seems right in the world of Ty Seagal. Honestly, this is the freakiest thing that he's done in a while, and I'm just happy enough to see that. Personally, I think a lot of the issues on this album stem in the fact that this thing is so freaking long and it could have been trimmed down a little bit. Take, for example, My Best Friend. This was a single, but clearly this one is the sore thumb of the singles. It's one of the sloppiest tracks here. This riff just really gets on my nerves. And with that, a lot of this track just kind of falls apart after that. I mean, personally, I do like the chaotic feel of this track. That's, you know, he's definitely in the right mindset. But outside of that, I don't really enjoy a lot about this track. Ty's vocals are some of his most obnoxious on this entire record. The sentiment behind the track is really sweet, though. Also, a lot of this album's weakest moments come in the final few tracks, like Repetition. You know, this track is just so sloppy. So much of this album is really some of Ty's most focused work in a long time. But then I hear this track with an instrumental that is lost from the word go, and Ty's asinine lyrics just put me to sleep. I have a lot of the same feelings on weight. This is just so tame, and you know, this is a stripped down track, and if you go back in Ty's discography, you're going to find a lot of really great stripped down ballads. But this one is so half-baked and unfinished. I mean, Ty sounds so lost here. Instrumentally, yeah, that, that buzzing bass riff is actually pretty cool. That's a thick boy. And yeah, some of the later moments on this track get a little heavier and crunchier. That's something I like and appreciate in Ty's music, but I feel like it's too little too late. It's also another very long track. This album could have been trimmed down. The track Danae, I mean, I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I am all for Ty making a tribute to his wife. Now, whether or not that track to tribute his love has to be six minutes long and the only lyrics are her first name, I don't know. I mean, I will say this. Some of the jammy synths on this track, I could really get with that. But personally, an over six minute studio version of this tune is not for me. For me, I feel like... This is the kind of track that Ty should be busting out at live shows and giving some improv. And what can we do as a finale? It's just nothing new for me. I mean, for me, he kind of lost focus this last third of the album and didn't get it back. This, al this album's finale here, I don't know about you, but it's not really moving me either way. It's just kind of here. And it's a shame because a lot of the rest of this album almost acts as like a career renaissance for Ty. Like Eggman, for example, one of my favorite singles leading up to this album. I love the energy of this track. It's just so raw. Ugh. And this is Ty at his weirdest, the dual vocals of this track. My goodness. And in some surreal lyrics and the way that this track progresses and just gets odder and odder and you have a really great single. I also love the way that this track just completely deconstructs itself by the end. Uh, my Room, also one of my favorite tracks here. 
I'd even argue it's the most instantaneous track here. I mean, right off the bat, this riff just, just sits with you. It's seriously catchy, and I love Ty's performance on this track. Maybe he's most sincere. Like, if I heard this track in my teens before I, I knew who Ty was, I would be instantly gravitating towards him. It's streamlined and smooth, but it's also really weird and out there, and Ty clearly has not lost sight of the psychedelic sound of this record. It's also just nice to hear Ty be himself. I also really like Watcher. I have a lot of the same feelings on this one. This is an old school, almost classic rock sounding jam from Ty, but one that's done really classy. It sounds familiar, but a more mature sound from Ty. Speaking of Ty, I think his vocal performance on this track may be the coolest one here. This track's pretty light on the ears, but it does have a little grit to it, especially when it comes to Ty's seemingly never ending soloing. And personally, I needed a track like To You. This is an upbeat, energetic track that has Ty freaking out a little. The upbeat strum rip is great and the zany keyboards that come along with it definitely give the dose of weird this track needs. It's the album at its most whimsical and I'm okay with that because Ty sounds like he's having a freaking blast. And because this track wasn't good enough already, this chorus is definitely leaning in the direction of some Harry Nilsson worship, which we are always a fan of. It's truly one of the more progressive tracks here, but it may be uh, my favorite one, honestly. This album overall is hard for me to rate because it's a long one. I don't think this album needed to be over an hour long, especially with so many tracks that are well over five minutes, six minutes. And it's a shame because so much of this record to me almost comes off like a career renaissance for Ty. Him kind of circling back to what made him get on the map in the first place, shine it up a bit and mature with it and put out a really set of genuinely freaky weird and psychedelic tracks i just wish he didn't completely lose focus in the final third because a lot of this material is really good but he definitely loses focus and consistency is an issue but for right now i'm feeling a light seven on this project but let me know what you all think down below if you like the video be sure to give us a like give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future and until next time have a great day friends